Hello and welcome to another photo editing video. Today I want to show you an awesome technique in Photoshop you can use especially for architecture photos that require a bit more atmosphere. So as an example I show you this photo here of Charles Bridge in Prague which I photographed on a gloomy morning during blue hour. It looks nice but in my opinion it could use a bit more atmosphere. So I now will show you how to get from this base image to this final result. What a difference, right? So we now have some kind of misty atmosphere, a little softer here in the midground, and yes, yeah, still the dramatic sky above. So yeah, let's have a look how to do this. So the first thing is you just have your base selected here and you duplicate it. Now under filters, I'm not sure if you've noticed there are some neural filters and if you click on them, most of those I don't find very helpful, but there is one filter in particular which comes in handy from time to time and that's the depth blur here. So let's just activate it and directly scroll down here where it says output depth map only. This is what we want. So this will now analyze the image and try to figure out how the depth is in the image. So what elements are closer to me and what elements are farther away. And the depth map is basically grayscale image. You already see this here, so I press OK. It did a fairly good job, so not perfect. For example, here it missed the mark a bit. But all in all, we now have a very nice depth representation of the image. Question now is what we're going to do with it. So first of all, I go to the channels and I control click on the RGB channel. This basically loads this grayscale image as a selection. Now I can deactivate it and I go down here and I go to solid color and I don't want to use black here. So I want to go with some bright warmish color, maybe something like that. I press OK and you see the mask or the selection I created before is directly applied as a mask here. Now what we can do when we click on that mask and we go to image adjustments levels, we can fine tune this depth map. For example, we can bring up the dark tones here and by this exclude the effect from the foreground because the foreground, you see it in this tiny image down here, gets nearly black. What we can also do, we can move this midtone slider and this way also limit the effect more to the areas in the background. So that's a nice way you can use to fine tune where this mist or fog appears in the image. So something like that. I think I'm going to go with it. Maybe bring this up a bit. You also see how first the figures here on the right side are excluded from the effect because they are closer and yeah, the neural filter identified this correctly. So I think I go with that here. Now I press OK. And yeah, obviously this is too much. So first of all, what you can always do, and that's why I chose to use this color layer, you can fine tune the color. You can also do this later. So I'm just going to leave it for now. And what we also do, we want to do this as a selective adjustment. So I press Ctrl or Command G to group this. And now I apply a mask to the group. Ctrl I or Command I inverts it. And now I zoom out a bit, select a very big brush, like 20% opacity. And now I paint in the effect gradually. And now the magic appears, or the magic happens. So this is now, maybe go with 10%, a very natural way to add some atmosphere to the image. And you can also go to like 5% opacity and just gradually paint it in. And if you go too far, uh, it starts to look a little unrealistic maybe. But I think in this instance here, for this image, it looks very good. So let's just keep it at that. You can certainly fine tune it more and depending on your source material you might also want to do that maybe add a bit more or a bit less atmosphere but what we want to do next is we will create a blank layer above the group set the blend mode to soft light and what i want to do is i want to select a color here from those lights but make it a bit more saturated something like that and now i do some dodging and burning on this layer and I'll do so around the lights. So let's maybe start with like 20%. 
Because if you have like mist or atmosphere in the air and you have lights, you usually get a bit of a glow around those lights. And this is what we try to mimic here. This way can make the image even more interesting. Let's look at the before and after quickly. And also I can remove the copy. I think I wouldn't even have needed it because the neural filter creates a separate layer anyway. And also this one I can remove. Now see the before and the after. So pretty intense. And I do this usually in the beginning because now on top of it, I work with some curves, which kind of brings everything more together and also reduces the effect a bit, but still maintains this soft, dreamy look. So I'll add a curves layer, adding some contrast. And you see now this misty effect is taken away a bit by adding the contrast, but it's still enough to yeah, maintain the atmosphere. So before and after. So let's add a bit more. And then we can also fine tune the opacity a bit. So go with something like this maybe. And we can do the same here for the group. You can also adjust the opacity. So this is without the effect. So now if we had added just the curves layer, it wouldn't look good. But if we first soften the image by adding this shine, this misty glow, it looks pretty good. Now also want to go in again and maybe reduce the saturation a bit. You can also check how it would look with a cooler tone, but I think I like the warm glow here. Yeah, and that's it. That's the technique I wanted to show you. So basically using the neural filter in Photoshop to give you a depth map of the image, which is not perfect, but it's for architecture usually good enough. So for landscape photos, I've tried it. It's usually off, especially if you have detailed structures with leaves and stuff. You usually get some blotches, so it doesn't really work very well for that. But if you have architecture with very geometric shapes, it does a very good job and you can really use it to give you a mask that you can then use to apply some atmosphere to your image. Because remember, atmosphere, mist, all that stuff, haze, you usually have more of it in the background. And by using this depth map, you can achieve this with just a few clicks of a button and you don't have to do so much manual masking. Let's again look at the final result, which you see I removed a bit even more of this misty effect because I wanted to keep it more natural. But still, it's up to you. Be creative and yeah, try to create magical photos. If you like this, don't forget, leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more and see you in the next video. Bye.